Over the last nine months, we all know that our beautiful home and chapel here was closed at University College Cork. It may have gone unnoticed to some because the campus was rather empty during the COVID crisis. It didn't go unnoticed to those of us who were looking across every day to see the amazing work that was being undertaken in the refurbishment and conservation project here at the Honan Chapel at UCC. None of this would have been possible without our generous sponsors, supporters and all of you who've made this possible. Through financial aid, through support, through moral support, huge thanks to each and every one of you and collectively for this amazing generosity to make this project a success. The project also wouldn't be a success without Michael O'Flynn. Uh, Michael, thank you so much as chair of the fundraising committee together with Nori Geary and Bishop Finton. Um, you brought enormous energy, passion and commitment. You reached out to places maybe that we may, we never have reached and you secured the funding that was necessary for this. But also you dedicated not only your efforts into fundraising, but your time and commitment to ensuring that the project was undertaken to the highest quality and on time. And you know what the joy is? We've captured all this on, on camera to tell the wonderful story of the before, the during and the after of the amazing refurbishment that has happened here at UCC. I suppose for me personally, having got married 30 years ago, when the day that was perhaps the doors were thrown open, it was a very special moment um, to see the beautiful architecture, to see the beautiful res restoration that has been undertaken. So it just remains for me to say, Mila Buikas, thank you so much for your generosity, and I'm looking forward to seeing the rededication of the chapel underway and the celebration that will follow. So go Mila Mahagwivgler, Kogardikas, and thank you so much for your, all your support. It's really appreciated. The Honan Chapel is a small Catholic church built in the Celtic Romanesque revival style on the grounds of University College Cork in Ireland. The building was designed in 1914 and completed in 1916. However, the story of the Honan Chapel did not end on the completion of the project in 1916. In fact, 2020 saw the beginning of the first major Honan Chapel renovation in over 105 years. Under the guidance of Father Ger Dunn, and with the support of University College Cork, the chapel was closed for nine months and a team of artisans began the careful restoration of the Honan. My involvement with the Honan Chapel began four years ago when I was appointed as a chaplain to UCC. Ordinarily going with that role is the title, the Dean of the Honan Chapel, which means I have the responsibility for the day-to-day -day running uh, of the chapel, what happens here, all the liturgical events and so on. We are very grateful to UCC really for the immense contribution that they make. It often goes unnoticed uh, to, to the Honan Chapel. I often think of the relationship between the Honan Chapel and UCC as one of interdependency because the Honan is owned and managed by a trust, a uh, board of trustees, and that's embedded in law. There's a strong sense of support from uh, governance in UCC and have been so supportive, particularly of the, of the renovation and the service uh, that it gives. So, so we're very honoured really that certainly in my time as chaplain here because they realise the, the value of the chapel to the university. All of the various uh, elements that have been um, dealt with in this restoration has been sensitive um, and so we have a very fine team particularly of uh, architect Peter Murphy and stone contractor Joe Costello and others including stained glass and so on. This is a rise with every building of this age and you get to a point where you have to look at it and stand back and say what do we need to do to secure this building for the next 50, 100 years, whatever it might be. It does need repairing and it does need restoring and it has it's never had a total makeover in its, in its life and the Holland Trust decided that this was uh, it was time to, to get going with a restoration conservation job on the building. So. I got involved in this approximately a year and a half, two years ago. 
in the Honan you have a lot of specialist finishes. We've got a uh, terrazzo floor to, to look at. We've got um, other, other elements internally, such as marble. We've got limestone. We've got very decorative work to, to deal with. We went out to tender went out to four contractors and Joe Costello of Stone Mad Contractors was selected. As a restoration company, we take on the full project as main contractor and as the restoration contractors for specialist works. When we take on a project such as the Horn and Chapel, I engage with the specialist trades who I feel would be the necessary people to undertake and execute the works. We went on site just before Christmas um, and uh, it, was, it was a slow enough start because we, we had a lot of issues to deal with. Uh, for instance, there were a lot of weddings taking place here and, there were, uh, and it, it is a very popular church, this, for weddings, so we had to try and work around that. The main works really are, are uh, raking out and repointing the, the, the limestone walls externally. The walls of the Honan Chapel are, are, are constructed of white limestone, which is a cork limestone, so it's an indigenous local stone. Um, that, that, that's, that was a big area of work. There was nothing wrong with the stone. The stone, in fact, is in very good condition, um, which is great because a lot of that stone has been carefully tooled and decorated. The main issues really arise with the pointing and water coming in through those areas with, with horizontal surfaces um, uh, high up where lead work might have decayed, where there might be problems with gutters. We're dealing with all of those elements, but above all, the, 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 the most intricate and the most detailed work is really on, on the raking out and repointing. There's also what we call a grouting regime to take place. In a wall like this, you have the limestone on the outside, you have this central core, and you have, a, 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 in this case, a brickwork skin on the interior, which is plastered internally. The external envelope of the building was all repointed with sand and cement mixtures over different periods of its life. As a result, the retainment of water within the core of the wall caused further damage internally. What we have to do is try and analyse how much of that central core has maybe been washed out over the years with water getting into the wall because it consisted simply of fines, it would have been limestone spalls, anything they had on site they would fill, they would fill that area with. Also on the external of the building we had gutter issues where some gutters had split and hopper heads had leaked and this in turn allowed a continuous water flow on the facade of the buildings at locations on the, the downpipes. And the upper masonry of the crosses and the parapet stones, they had to be checked. The slating is in good condition. We intend to keep the slates. There are some slates which have to be replaced. There's an allowance for those. The coping stones at roof level um, all have to be lifted. Anybody who knows the Honan will have seen the black staining on the outside. And that staining has come about because there was, there was never any overhang or any air, way of the water getting away from the walls. So if you have an overhang, as you have on all most traditional buildings and modern buildings, it gives the water an opportunity to go away. Some water will touch the wall, but in this case it was literally flowing down the wall. So we devised a system for taking the water away. Internally, we have a lot of interior plaster to be repaired. We've got a, the mechanical and electrical, electrical installation to be installed. We have works to the um, mosaic floor, which is very delicate and very, um, very detailed. There was then works carried out to repair the stained glass where necessary. This was carried out by Arius Glass. This involves basically removing extra leads that had covered over cracked pieces of glass. There's still the original pieces of glass, which is, say, basically a good thing that the previous conservators did, is they retained all the original materials. What we're trying to do is make the windows more readable. So if we can remove, say, some of the lead that clutters the windows, you can get back to closer to the original designs that were put in in the beginning of the 20th century. We found that the storm glazing that was placed in front of the very decorative stained glass windows was causing damage and had been incorrectly placed. So all of that storm glazing was removed. They repaired where necessary 
but complying with conservation practice. We don't try to redo everything. We just try to say, okay, what at this time can we do that's going to make the window look better, last longer, but not a great deal of effort because we're trying to conserve it. We're not trying to remake it. Um, here, we remove some silicone that was used to hold the windows in. And in keeping with the other conservation measures now taking place, we replace the silicone with natural hydraulic lime mortars. So we're working in tandem with the stonemason conservation. Once those repairs were complete, they restorm glazed on the outside with new storm glazing, allowing a venting on the bottom of the end sill and at the top where they've taken out a curvature of the glass to allow an airflow between the storm glazing and the stained glass. Outside of that we have uh, loose furniture, we have Irish oak pews which were specially designed and, and made for this church which are unique in my experience. I, I don't think I have ever seen such decorative pews and joinery in a church as I've seen, as I've seen here. There's quite a bit of work to be done to the plaster to fix it where, where isolated leaks have, have got into the building. And there was also issues where an earlier intervention of plaster boarding being applied on certain sections of the walling. This in turn also traps moisture between the back board of the dry lining and your masonry walling. In conservation, what you try and do is you try and maintain the character of the building. You try and keep the patina, the, if there is natural staining, if there's, if there's aging in the, in, the in the structure, you try to, to retain that. So when, when the building is finished, the timbers, the natural staining, the natural aging of the building will still, will still be retained. On the mosaic floor, we do have um, we do have cracks, natural uh, shrinkage cracks, which have occurred over the years, which we will have to fill, and it's going to be quite a detailed job because we have to. The, 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 the mosaic is, is in different colours. There's a, a, quite a few different colours running through it. So what we've, we've got to try and do is fill those cracks and try and match those colours as best we can. It has suffered repairs in its lifetime, incorrectly carried out and incorrect mortars used, which causes a discoloration in the mosaic or cause unsightly lines where they use a darker mortar or cementitious mortar. And where incorrect mortars have been used, they will be carefully cut out using minute chisels. And again, it's like anything in the church, where it is a conservation project, you want to do the minimum intervention, but to give the best result. We have a black and a white, obviously you're going to have to put black back where black was or white was where white was, but other middling colours um, shouldn't be affected too much by what we're doing. This current renovation has been very faithful to um, its origins, so all of the, all of the various uh, elements that have been um, dealt with in this restoration has been sensitive. Whoever pulled these things together had a great mind because they don't clash, they work well, uh, including the, the uh, stained glass windows. What's really wonderful about this church is the mixture of styles, is, the, is this traditional kind of oratory look that you get when you walk in. And it's only when you come up close you start to see the, the stonework and the Aztec type motifs around arches. And you start to see, like in the capitals here, you see carvings which are quite traditional there, sort of based in the medieval references. But then you, all see, you also see Art Deco references, Art Nouveau, they're, they're, they're all blended in here particularly the uh, floor, but works so well together. It has become, over the 105 years of its existence, uh, a place of pilgrimage, a place of prayer, also a place uh, for, for tourism. And pe people are so taken by, you know, the, the Harry Clark windows around us here, the Oppenheimer uh, mosaic floor, and now I suppose they're, they're re-seeing it again with new eyes with the, with the, with the renovation. I always think of the Holland Chapel, a place that I really have fallen in love with over the last few years. I think I'll continue to fall even more in love now because of its new beauty. 
I'm, I'm looking into the future, of course, with great confidence and with great hope because um, the chapel, to me, is new again. I hope that uh, people will see that um, the, the, the rationale behind uh, the restoration is really to draw people really closer to the chapel and, by extension, closer to relationship with God. The Honan Chapel is a unique case study illustrating the role played by the Dublin Arts and Crafts movement in helping to renew Cork craftsmanship in the first decades of the 20th century. The building of the Honan Chapel and its original liturgical furnishings has been comprehensively examined by Virginia Tehan and Elizabeth Wincott Hecate in The Honan Chapel, A Golden Vision, published by Cork University Press in 2004. <laughs>